Hello everyone, I am the Canadian Gaming Penguin. In the last guide episode, I explained the basics of gear, including what types of gear are best for each role, and the importance of item level. I also gave tips and explained what to expect in the first three dungeons. In today's guide episode, I will be talking about the different types of roulettes that will become available as you progress in the game. I will also be explaining why they are useful to do each day. Before I get into duty roulettes, however, I will first be talking about guild tests and leave quests. Let's get started. So, just what are guild tests? Well, guild tests are instanced duties that require a party to complete special tasks within a certain period of time. The party consists of one tank, one healer, and two DPS, with one exception. The last guild hest requires a party of eight people. Each guild hest is different and in some ways first introduces you to working with other players in a party system, assuming you do this before dungeons. If you're like me and forgot about them, then you might not be trying them until after you've tried dungeons. <laughs> I didn't actually try my first guild hest until I was well into the game. <laughs> I uh, also haven't done all of them on my main character yet. <laughs> Anyways, a guild hests ha will have tasks that can be seen in the duty information. It is important to pay attention to it and also to the NPC chat that will appear periodically on your screen. Partly because some tasks are not to kill something, but rather do something else with them, such as put them to sleep. The guild hests are designed to introduce players to mechanics that they will come across in dungeons and trials, etc. Which is probably why you would want to start with some of these first guild hests before diving right into dungeons. After reviewing the descriptions of the first four guild hests, I definitely recommend doing these before dungeons, especially if you're new to the game or MMOs in general. The first four guild hests will help with learning some strategies that you will use in every single dungeon you come across. The first two guild hests are available at level 10, and the next two are available at level 15. In addition to the introduction to mechanics, guild hests also introduce different strategies that you and your party will use while in dungeons, etc. There is one strategy for each guild hest. And doing guild tests will help with coordinating with other players while in dungeons or trials, etc. Guild tests are unlocked at level 10 after starting the Simply the Hest quest, which directs you to speak to a battle warden. The small towns in each of the starting areas will have this quest and will have their designated location in the quest name, such as Simply the Hest, Ulda. The guild hests range from level 10 to level 40, with two guild hests unlocking every five levels. There are a total of 14 guild hests. Guild hests must be done in order. This is similar to the Hall of Novice lessons. Guild hests reward experience and gil, and will also receive a bonus when you complete a guild hest with a class or job for the first time. There is a further bonus to you and your party for completing the guild hest without anyone KOing. Assuming no one KO'd. That is, no one died. There is also a roulette for guild hests, which I will talk about in a little while. On to leave quests. There are three different types of leave quests. Battlecraft leaves, fieldcraft leaves, and tradecraft leaves. The battlecraft leaves are the combat-focused leaves, the fieldcraft leaves are for gathering, and the tradecraft leaves are for crafting. Leave quests can be obtained by speaking with a leave met NPC found in various locations throughout the game. To include the leave quests, players will first need to complete a main scenario quest. The main scenario quest will depend on your starting city. Additionally, there will be a quest in each of the different areas that works as a trial, lore-wise, to be able to unlock the leave quests of that area. If you started in Ulda, the main scenario quest is titled Way Down in the Hole. The first trial leave quest you will have is titled Leaves of Horizon. If you started in Gridania, the main scenario quest is titled Spirit Hold Broken, and the first trial leave quest you will have is titled Leaves of Bent Branch. 
If you started in Limsa Lumensa, the main scenario quest is titled Just Desserts. No, not just desserts, just deserts. Not missing an S there. The first trial leave quest you will have is titled Leaves of Swift Perch. The main scenario quests require a level 9 Disciple of War or Disciple of Magic class or job. The first leaves of location requests require a level 10 Disciple of War or Disciple of Magic class or job. And note that the trial leave quests for each of these areas is available regardless of which city you started in. Thus, once you have made your way to each of these different locations, you will be able to unlock the leave quests for those areas after completing the trial quest. After you have completed a trial leave quest, you will then gain access to the battlecraft leaves, the fieldcraft leaves, and the tradecraft leaves of that area. Fieldcraft and tradecraft leaves will not be visible if you have not yet acquired a gathering or crafting job, respectively. That is, there will be nothing listed. Now that we know how leave quests are unlocked, how are the quests completed? Unlike other quests, these leave quests are different in that they are time-restricted. Since they are timed, we are required to begin the process ourselves by initiating the start of the quest. After you have accepted a leave quest, if you open up the journal and select the leave quest, we can see that at the bottom of the journal area, there is a map, initiate, and abandon options. To initiate the leave quest, that is to start the quest, we must hit the initiate button. Before you do hit initiate, however, I recommend opening up the map and taking a look at where the leave quest will take place. You will know the leave quest location by the green colored circle on the map. I recommend heading over in that direction first before you initiate the quest. Why? Because there is bonuses when you complete leave quests. One of these bonuses is based on the speed of completion. That is, how quickly you complete the leave quest. I also recommend going to the nearest Aetherite and setting your home point to this location. The main reason why I recommend doing this is because if you die during the leave quest and you respawn manually, you will not have to restart the leave quest. I especially recommend doing this if you're still learning how leave quests work. This mostly applies to the battlecraft leaves. Now, after you have selected the initiate button, there may be a window that pops up stating, quote, your home point is not set to an aetherite in this area. If you return to your current home point at any time during the leave quest, you will automatically abandon the duty. Proceed, end quote. Assuming you set your home point to a nearby aetherite in the area, you will not see this window. You can choose to ignore this warning, or you can back out of initiating the quest and set your home point at the nearest aetherite. There will be a first or second window, depending on the home point situation, that will appear showing a difficulty setting. The difficulty will increase the level of whatever the leave quest is about. So if you were doing a battlecraft leave and it was a level 10 leave, if you did a plus 4 difficulty, the enemies would be at level 14 rather than level 10. 10. Level 10 would be a zero difficulty, level 11 for a level 1 difficulty, etc., or roughly that. If you are more comfortable doing leave quests and are comfortable with whichever class or job you are playing as, I recommend going with the level 4 difficulty as it will give you the highest bonus upon successful completion. If you aren't all that comfortable, I do recommend going with at least a plus 1 difficulty as you will still get a bit of a bonus. The bonus in question, extra experience and gill. In addition to experience and gill that leave quests reward, they may reward gear or other items. Now to elaborate more on what each of these different types of leave quests are, and we'll begin with the battlecraft leaves. Battlecraft leaves have much more variety to the different tasks that are required for their completion. Some require you to use actions such as soothe or beckon, while others require you to kill certain enemies, etc. I think the easiest way to demonstrate how battle how a battlecraft leaves works is by showing you. Conveniently, I hadn't done the trial version of the quests for leave meets here. So this is a leaves of little Alamigo, and you can see it's required level 25. Esmond, the local leaf quest representative in Little Alamigo, is seeking an adventurer to undertake guild leaves. Greetings and welcome to Little Alamigo. My name is Esmond and I represent the Adventurers Guild. So after they introduced themselves, 
they will basically tell you that they have a test for you and you can see this is the test that they have for you and you can read the description of the leave quest itself and this particular uh, leave quest rewards uh, this amount of experience, gill, and a venture which is used with retainers, which I haven't talked about yet and I will do so in a future video. And you can see we need to report to the Southern Thanlin, the time limit, etc., the location, and the client, blah blah blah. So we have the accept or decline, we're of course going to accept it, and then be warned that the voice sent will tear blah blah blah, and then that's regarding the uh, particular leave quest itself. And as you can see up here on the mini map, we have that green circle. As mentioned, we have that there as well. And so we're going to jump up onto my mount. So as you can see, I moved over here and I do that because I prefer to be in the general area of the leave quest. And you can see this is a different symbol that is the unlocking the leave quests itself, which is also why it's the purple. And then that's my main scenario quest I'm currently working on. Anyway, so we can see down here at the bottom here, we have map, initiate, and abandon. Well, technically we can't abandon this one because it is a trial one. If we abandoned this quest, which we obviously can't, uh, that is when this would be abandoned as well. So we can't actually abandon this, so there's no reason to not do this. So anyway, we have the initiate, and as I mentioned, you'll see the your home point is not set to blah, blah, blah. I can ignore that. Recommend level 4, and as it notes also, changing classes during the course of this duty or using a class above the recommended level may reduce the amount of experience awarded upon completion. Well, unfortunately, I don't have any classes that are actually in the range of level 25, so it doesn't really matter what class I use. So I'm just going to stick with my ninja here, who is currently at level 40, which is one of the lower levels right now. <laughs> Um, anyway, so we're going to confirm that. You'll see the discrepancy, blah, 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 blah. Well, that's because I have such a much higher level. Anyway, so in our duty information, we have gather all missing pages of the necrologus, necrologos, whatever, and defeat the creature summoned from within it. So we can see we need soiled necrologus pages. Z -z 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 -z. Can I mess up that word anymore? Soiled necrologus page and you can see we have this person here corpse brigade pike dancer and a little symbol above his head well that tells us that this is a leave quest bad guy enemy that we need to defeat and so we're gonna go ahead and do that and it shouldn't take me too long because i am a level 25. you will also see throughout the map here if we open up this we have a bunch of little circles that tells me that the various leave quest uh enemies or whatever it is that we're doing in our leave quest are located in those places you also want to visit uh the other ones occasionally because you may also find a treasure chest and you will have to loot that before you finish the leave quest otherwise you will not be able to obtain whatever it is so as you can see we have a treasure coffer right here uh, that's what I meant by treasure chest, and we received a potion of intelligence, which we can also see in our chat here, and we'll see that in our... Back to what we were doing. <laughs> we have uh, other locations here as well. You can stick with your one depending on how fast they spawn. Unfortunately, you will have to explore a number of different areas and most of them. You may also come across a, as I accidentally turn on auto run, you may also come across a wanted, um, unfortunately I don't have one this time, a wanted creature or enemy if you will. This is also in a way kind of an introduction to how the hunt system works, kind of, and I say that loosely because it's not really. And then if you defeat that enemy, you will get a bonus at the end, and do note that these wanted uh, wanted enemies are a lot tougher to defeat. So do proceed when you fight against them with caution. There we go, so we got the last page, and we'll see a little pop of smoke down here because that's where I defeated the last enemy. And now we have this lesser Vodoriga person thingy, and um... This will also summon things or fly away at some point, but because I'm much higher level, I don't have that situation. 
And then as you can see, it's returned to leaf mat at Little Alamego. So if you have multiple leaves at once, I usually hit no, complete the ones in those areas before I hit yes, or I hit yes right away and just teleport right back. And But since we don't have multiple ones, obviously I want to hit the yes button. So we speak with Esmond here again and you appear, blah, blah, blah. You've completed it. You can see the bonus of award based on difficulty, the bonus of award based on speed of completion. And I think those are the only two rewards as well. And then of course, that means we've also completed these for Leaves of El Alamigo. Those two quests were joined together there. And so now we have Little Almigo Leaves unlocked. And now you can see we have all these different leaves here as well. And if you're ever not sure if you've done one before, there'll be a little check mark if you have done one. And as you can see, this one here also gives a Velveteen Rope Belt as a reward. So if you happen to be talking to a Leaf Meat uh, NPC, you will see there's the Battlecraft, Fieldcraft, Tradecraft, etc. There's also the information on leaves, which basically explains everything that's also that I kind of explained already. But there is also leaf linking. So when multi multiple party members are all possess the same Battlecraft leaf, they will have the opportunity to perform what is called a leave link. This will assure that due credit is given for the completion of the task and prevent the need for repeating the same leave quest twice. You can also see the wanted as well. On a rare occasions while undertaking Battlecraft leave quests, you will come across creatures with bounties on their heads. While you need not engage them to complete your leave quest objective, slaying the wanted targets will earn you the prize of their bounty. And then there's the treasure coffers as well. You happen to discover a treasure coffer while in a leave quest, you are entitled to the contents within as are your party members. All party members should check the coffer individually as not to miss out on their share of the loot. Moving on now to a fieldcraft leave. Like with battlecraft leaves, I will demonstrate how one works. And here I am in Central Shroud talking to Turney here for some fieldcraft leaves. We see here we have a couple of them. We'll go ahead and go with the first one here. And I've accepted that. And if we look like with the battlecraft leaves, we will see we have the green area over here, so I'm going to hop up onto my mountain and head over in that direction. And we are now in the area, and if we open up this and we hop off of our mount, because I don't think we can initiate it while we're on our mount, and I'm not going to check that, you can see we have that warning yet again, and the difficulty, I'm just going to crank that up because I can, and of course this is the first one I am doing on this character. Once a leave has been initiated, its objectives will be blah 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 blah, so you can see our objectives here. It is a little bit different with that, and uh... You can read that yourself. <laughs> uh, so basically here we have these trees all around here and we have our time limit. We need to collect eight uh, of these trees. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, and uh, wherever the eighth one is. I can't see it anyway. So we have, oh, there it is. So we have the eight trees there. And we have the evaluation point. So this is evaluating based on our total score of how well we do with collecting the items. And you can see we only have two items here. Well, you're going to want to utilize your skills such as this one, where you can see we now have a 100% chance of collecting this one. Uh, no chance of high qualities because we're too low level and our gear sucks, which is why you'd probably want to reduce that. You can see we have this information as well up here. Uh, blah blah blah. Anyway, so we have an 80% chance for this one. You can see it is a level 17, so we'll actually get a higher score if we uh, collect this. And the evaluation points has a bonus if we collect with that, so we'll just go with this one for now. One other thing to note that your GP will not regenerate while you're gathering with the tree, so you will actually want to wait outside of said whatever gathering point for a bit before you start gathering so that your GP can actually regenerate and I'm going to do so so I can get that field mastery 3 yet again. Uh, there is also potions that you can use that restores your uh, GP. Those you won't really get access to until you're a higher level and there's really no point on using them as a lower level because it would just be a waste of that potion. There we go. And we'll use that skill once more. I'm going to try to get one of these at least. 
And we did, and we see we got a big bonus with the uh, collecting there as well. So the higher quality that you get uh, for th gear, not gear, for the items, then the higher the score you will get as well. I'm going to continue just collecting the lower one, and then we'll see you after I'm done that. I mentioned how the GP wouldn't regenerate. Well, whenever you successfully get an item that you're gathering, you will regenerate five of your GP uh, while you're successfully having done so, as your CLOs will be 139. And there we go. And naturally, a skill that would have helped me with this, uh, I just get because I leveled up to level 15. Anyways, as you can see, it had the option to teleport back. And then we'll talk to Tyranny again. Let me read your reward. We have a bonus based on difficulty. And the completion bonus there. Fieldcraft leaves. So fieldcraft leaves are intended for Disciple of Land and require that the proper tools be equipped before initiation. Fishing leaves, while classified as fieldcraft leaves, are conducted in any manner similar to, a to tradecraft leaves in that they are initiated as soon as you obtain the plates. Also, fieldcraft leaves, other than those of the fishing variety, must be performed alone. Now to tradecraft leaves. These ones can take longer as you will need to acquire the materials to craft by either gathering the items yourself or by purchasing the items via the market board or from a NPC if those are available to sell said item and then turning the crafted item in. You can also buy a crafted item required for a leave quest from the market board and skipping the whole crafting process altogether. It can be very costly if you do it that way. As with the other two leaves, I will demonstrate how the trade craft leaves work by actually doing one. And here I am in Ulda for the trade craft leaves. As you can see, there's a little dialogue, blah, 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 trade craft leaves, yada, yada, yitter. <laughs> and you can see I have, there won't be anything displayed here because I don't have these unlocked currently. I just have Weaver. So we have these three uh, quests. We're actually going to accept all of these. And so if we look in our inventory here, not inventory, we are duty information here. Deliver a pair of hemp and whatever thingies. I don't know how to say that. <laughs> so you can either do a recipe search or because I have the cloth crafter, AKA weaver only available, it should be easy enough to find them in here. So uh, hemp and whatever those thingies are, these here. So we can see we need the hempen yarn and the undyed hempen cloth. And of course, we can see a recipe tree here and the raw materials list. And we actually have enough of everything already. So I'm going to go ahead and craft this. Alrighty, and I have all of those done. So if we talk to the uh, over here, apparently. I've not actually done the trade crafts here before, so whoops, I guess I should have looked that up. Anyway, so we need to speak with Roderick here, who's turning these in, and or at least two of these. And good morning, blah blah blah. We have this hemp and trusses, this is however you say that. Handing in, sign here, please. Thank you. Have a nice day. Collect that. Ta da! And we have the second one here with the underpants also completed. And then obviously we have this completing tradecraft leaves. After creating all the requested items, speak with the client to bring up the item request window. Drag the item from your inventory or just right click it and select it uh, into the item request window and click hand over to complete the transaction. Submitting HQ or HQ as in high quality items will turn, will, will turn, will earn you a greater reward. And our last client is apparently uh, in Western Thanalan down over there. So we're not going to turn that one in. Anyway, that is the trade craft. It is pretty straightforward. Basically, collect the materials that you need for crafting or just buy the item on the market board and then craft said item or just turn it in to set clients. And you'll have the green indication of whether or not you have the items required to complete it. On the occasion, you will have a quest to turn in multiple 
um, things kind of a chain. So do you want to turn more in? Do you have extras? Turn these more in for more bonus, etc, etc, etc. Those you don't really get until a higher level anyway, where a chain experience will definitely help out. Anyway, that is the tree craft. Once you are a higher level and have joined a grand company, you will also gain access to grand company leave quests. These are initiated in the same way as leave quests, but these leaves reward a lot less gill and experience. The primary reason to do grand company leaves is for the grand company seals that you will receive. Now that we've covered guild hests and leave quests, I'm going to move on to talk about duty roulettes. Firstly, what is a duty roulette? A duty roulette is basically a roulette for certain duties. Yeah, I know, real descriptive. <laughs> Say, for example, you have completed both Sestasha and the Tamtara Deepcroft dungeons. Once you have completed the Tamtara Deepcroft, you will gain access to the duty roulette leveling, or leveling roulette as I prefer to call it. If you queue for a leveling roulette, it will choose between those two dungeons as those are two dungeons that are part of the leveling roulette and are dungeons that you have unlocked. As you unlock more dungeons, they will be also included in the leveling roulette. There are several different types of roulettes that will become available to you as you progress in the game and un as you unlock various different content. These roulettes are as follows. Expert, level 80 dungeons, level 50, 60, 70 dungeons, leveling, trials, main scenario, guild hests, frontline, mentor, alliance raid, and normal raids. The expert roulette has at least two different dungeons at the current level cap, which is currently level 80. These dungeons will be the most recent dungeon, that is the newest dungeon, and the second newest dungeon. The level 80 dungeons roulette will include the level 80 dungeons, but not the dungeons that are included in the expert roulette. The level 50, 60, 70 roulette includes the level 50, 60, and 70 dungeons, but not uh, the two that are part of the main scenario quest. In order to queue for this roulette, you must have unlocked at least two of these dungeons and must have a minimum item level of 90 or higher. I will also note that the leveled 80 and expert also have item level requirements. The leveling roulette, as I mentioned earlier, is unlocked after completing the Tam Tara Deepcroft. Technically, Sestasha and the Tam Tara Deepcroft are required, but as you cannot unlock the Tam Tara Deepcroft until you've completed Sestasha, the trial roulettes include all normal and hard raids. There are no extreme or higher trials in the trials roulette. In order to unlock the trials roulette, you are required to have completed two trials. The main scenario roulette will not become available until you are further into the A Realm Reborn main scenario quest. There are only two dungeons in this, and those are the two eight-player dungeons that I mentioned in the last guide bit episode. The guild hest roulette is unlocked after you have completed the first two guild hests. The frontline roulette is... Well, it isn't really a roulette exactly, but it does have daily rewards similar to the other roulettes. In order to do this roulette, you will need to have unlocked frontline and have a soul crystal equipped. Effectively, you must be level 30 and have unlocked the job for whichever class. For example, if I were a gladiator, I would need the paladin soul crystal, which would change my class to the paladin job. The mentor roulette is a complicated and a very hard roulette to unlock. Basically, in order to get this roulette, you must complete all the dungeons, all the guild tests, all the trials, including extremes, all the raids, excluding the savage versions, be level 80, and have an average item level of 455, and you must be a mentor. In order to be a mentor, you must have earned certain achievements. To be a battle mentor, you must have completed 1,000 instanced dungeons, raids, or trials, received 1,500 player commendations, completed the tank role quest to have loved and lost, completed the healer role quest to the soul of temperance, and have completed at least one of the two DPS role quests, Courage Born of Fear, or a Tearful Reunion. To be a trade mentor, you must gather or catch 300 collectibles, synthesize 100 collectibles, have at least one gatherer at level 80, and have at least one crafter at level 80. Trade mentors will not have access to the mentor roulette, 
which I think is sort of obvious as they aren't combat-based jobs. Uh, thus, this will take a very long time to gain access to. That said, the Mentor Roulette will assign players to duties that are struggling to fill party member slots. This does not include parties that are in currently in progress duties. This roulette will also not match an all mentor party. There are also achievements for completing this roulette and also rewards as a result. The mentor roulette is mostly for those players who are actually willing to teach newer players or other players how to or the mechanics or even help them with their jobs etc while doing various content in the game hence the mentor status your experience may vary when you come across mentor players anyway back to the different roulettes alliance raid roulette will be available once you have completed two alliance raids alliance raids are 24 player raids these are large scale duties i will dive deeper into them in a future video Normal raids roulette are the eight-man raids. Now, why exactly would you want to queue for a roulette? Well, the short answer? The rewards. You can see the rewards when you select each of the roulettes in the duty finder. So, let's go and do that. And I'm actually boring my main character because I have all the roulettes except for the mentor one currently unlocked. As you can see, these are the rewards for leveling roulette. The rewards are experience, gill, and grand company seals. Note, if you're not yet in a grand company, you will not see the grand company seals. Rewards scale up based on the class or job that you queue with. For example, if I joined the queue for the leveling roulette with a level 60 class or job, I would gain more gill, experience, and grand company seals at the end of the dungeon run than if I were to queue with a class or job that was at level 59 or or lower, so on and so forth. If I queued with a level 80, however, I would get different rewards because the level cap right now is level 80, so I clearly cannot gain experience from this roulette. Instead, I would get Gil, Grand Company Seals, and Allegan Tomestones. Allegan Tomestones, or just Tomestones for short, are a currency in the game that are used to exchange for various items, primarily for better gear. I will elaborate further on Tomestones in a future video. You may also have noticed the Adventurer Need included in the reward. The reward listed under it will be the re be rewarded to you if you queue for a role that is, well, currently needed. As of this recording, this is showing tank. This means that if I queued as a tank, I would get this additional bonus. Each roulette rewards something different or in different amounts. For further details on the specifications of the roulettes themselves, you can scroll through each of them to get the details. In summary, the reason why you want to do roulettes be rewards. You will gain a lot of experience for doing the roulettes, which helps with leveling up your classes and jobs, especially if you play as more than one class or job. Mentioning great ways to level up classes and jobs, that is exactly what I will be talking about in the next guide video. There are many different ways to gain experience. Anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button. While you're down there, please also consider subscribing so that you do not miss out the next guide episode. Now that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Thank you.